there. Today we're continuing looking through Mark chapter uh, 13. Uh, and today, as we continue our journey through it, um, uh, it's verses 14 through to 23. That's Mark 13, 14 to 23. Remember, we might kind of range over a bit more of it, but uh, that's what we're reading today. So have a read and we'll talk. So uh, today we continue on. Remember yesterday we saw how uh, Jesus was, uh, rather than giving a particular timetable, was actually giving uh, an exhortation, encouragement to stand firm and to, uh, to be, on your, be on our guard. And that's what he was telling the disciples in particular. Uh, uh, now he moves on in verse 14. He says, When you see the abomination that causes desolation, standing where it does not belong, let the reader understand. Then, it, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Now, this abomination that causes desolation is actually spoken of in the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 9. Um, and it's, uh, it's a time of, it's a, almost a time of almost unparalleled um, distress and, <coughs> and an, an almost unparalleled sacrilege um, uh, of, uh, against God. Uh, in Daniel chapter 9, uh, it, uh, I'll, I'll just quickly find, grab that for you. Um, Daniel chapter 9. Uh, 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 he's, the, the, he spe- uh, Daniel speaks in a vision of, um, <coughs> of what's going to come into the future. Um, uh, an, an anointed one, a, a Messiah, will come to rebuild Jerusalem. Uh, uh, he'll confirm a covenant in verse 27 with many. In the middle of the seven, uh, he'll put an end to sacrifice and offering. This is someone who's going to come, who's going to destroy the city. And on a wing of the temple, he will set up an abomination that causes desolation until the end that is decreed is poured out on him. In a sense, this is uh, Daniel has a vision of uh, uh, someone coming, in a sense, who's uh, going to be do something so terrible uh, uh, in the temple that it will it's it will be so sacrilegious that almost it will be almost unspeakable, unimaginable. Um, and there have been various theories about uh, when this might have happened, but uh, Jesus here says actually. Uh, it hasn't happened yet. It's, it's going to happen soon, actually. It's going to be coming soon. Uh, in a sense, uh, what he's saying is uh, these things are coming and coming soon. Um, he's going to tell that, remember we saw yesterday, I mentioned yesterday, uh, verse 30, uh, uh, this generation won't pass away. And so Jesus says to his, his disciples, when you, see that, when you see this unparalleled sacrilege, this unparalleled uh, desecration, then uh, uh, the urgency... Uh, of that moment is also unequaled. Um, uh, it's a t- it's a, such a time of judgment that all you can do is escape. Sometimes when judgment is coming, when there's such terrible things coming, you can't fight back at it. You can't. You just need to escape. And that's the kind of type of language that Jesus is employing here. Uh, he's saying, uh, and he uses a whole lot of metaphors here to say, don't look back. Don't stop. Uh, all. The, the only thing you've got to worry about at this point is fleeing from the judgment of God. Uh, it'll be dreadful for pregnant women and nursing mothers. Don't even go back to get your cloak. Don't even go down to the house. Just go straight away. If it's in winter, it'll be terrible. Um, uh, in fact, it is, it'll be so bad that it'll only be by the mercy of God that it's cut short. Uh, what we're seeing here is uh, a picture in a sense that Jesus says, uh, when these things happen, it'll be such a time uh, of judgment, in a sense of God's judgment, uh, but a, such a time of desecration, uh, uh, unparalleled in the past, um, unequaled in the future. Uh, and it will only be uh, out of the sovereignty of God uh, that it's cut short at all. And all, we, all you'll be able to do, Jesus says to the disciples, is just flee. Uh, you won't be able to fight it. Um, uh, at that time, when this is happening, uh, because it's so terrible, because uh, you know, uh, because the temple's been destroyed and this desecration is happening, people will come and say, people will jump up to say, "I'm the Messiah, or I'm a Christ. I can, I can fix this, or follow me, and, and we'll be saved." And Jesus says, "They'll all be deceivers. Don't believe any of them. False Christs and false prophets will appear." And perform signs to deceive the elect. Signs generally aren't a good idea. 
Wicked generation asks for a sign. Jesus doesn't reply with a sign here. And some people will appear and perform signs, but they'll, they'll, all they'll be will be to deceive. Again, his, his uh, constant refrain is, be on your guard. I've told you everything ahead of time. We need to be on our guard. Um, and we need to remember that when the judgment of God falls, uh, we cannot resist that on our own. We're going to see in the next couple of days uh, how we can escape God's judgment. Um, and the disciples are going to uh, hear, hear that as well. But Jesus here gives us a picture of the urgency of uh, escaping God's judgment. Do whatever it, ta it takes uh, to escape God's judgment. And as it turns out, there's only one way to escape God's judgment. Uh, there's only one way to escape what's to come, and that is to put our trust in Jesus. Jesus, as he speaks these words here, is less giving us a particular timetable and more with uh, stronger and stronger language, uh, begging with us, pleading with us to be on our guard, to watch out, to remember him and to put our trust in him. Why don't I pray? Heavenly Father, we do uh, are aware of the severity and the strength of your judgment, which we deserve. Um, we're aware of the severity of, of uh, and, and the desecration which can come as those who oppose you uh, um, do their best to, uh, to do that. But Father, we pray again that you'd help us to stay on our guard. Help us to, um, uh, to do what needs to be done to escape your judgment and to escape the judgment that's to come. And help us to see the only way we can do that is to put our trust in Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you next time.